creating infographics, just a quick question. Uh, show of hands, who's in here because they have an assignment that involves infographics? A few of us. And do you know what your assignment is yet or not yet? Okay, fair enough. So what I'm gonna do is provide you kind of a general overview of what infographics are. I'll provide you with some design tips, some kind of best practices. Then we're gonna go into some free resources that we can use to build an infographic. At any point, if you have a question, my face might be nestled in my laptop, I may not see a hand. Just get my attention, I do love questions. And I guess to start off with, let me ask you a question. What's an infographic? Okay, let's take a step back. What two words build the word infographic? Information and graphics. Yeah, information, information, and graphics, or graphical information. And then where do we see infographics? On a day-to-day, -day, where do you see an infographic? Poster. Posters, yeah, for sure, posters. Advertisements, social media. Is a road sign an infographic? Definitely it is, it's graphical information. Looking at this road sign here, you're driving down the road, you see this, it kind of communicates what it's trying to say. But if you're driving down the road and you see a paragraph, you might not be able to take all that in as quickly as you can with an infographic. Okay. And why do we use infographics? What do you think the benefit of an infographic is? So it's information that you're trying to communicate in a much quicker manner and an easier to digest manner. Um, people tend to remember a lot more of things that they see and things that they do. And infographics really help that. And you'll notice in social media, like the trend is becoming more and more visual. It can be compared like Twitter to what now is like Instagram. Images are becoming more and more important in terms of like marketing, in terms of advertising, and even personal branding. Um, so you'll see a pretty much a good gravitation towards infographics on a lot of different types of uh, mediums. And there's a few different types of infographics that we tend to cover. Um, and I'll showcase a few of them. Don't feel like you have to stick to one type of infographic or one's the right one, one's not correct. You can definitely mix and match when you build your own. Here's some general outlines of a few different types. So the first one I like to talk about is comparison infographics. And it's essentially that you're comparing one column to the other column. So this one's kind of a facetious topic, geeks versus hipsters. And I have two different columns of information. How do I know what information pertains to geeks? What information belongs to geeks? How can I tell just by looking at it, even if you can't read the words? Yes? Like stereotyping? Stereotyping, yeah, that's how I gather the information, but very, just on the graphical, on like just looking at this thing here, how do I know that this information here pertains to this category? Yes? Colors? Colors, yeah. Colors is a great tool in infographics. I color coded the information on one end, and the other information has a different color. What else? So, yes? Well, the organization of the idea because it's divided? Yeah, placement. So that's one of the steps away from like traditional mediums that infographics takes, where you have your full sheet, like a full canvas of possibilities of where you're gonna put information and pictures. Usually when you're right, we start on one corner and we write to the other corner. It's not so much the case in infographics anymore. So placement, color, anything else? I guess even graphics, but we'll get into that in some other examples. Charts, I do like charts for the simple reason that I'm pretty lazy. And let's say I am looking at this chart and I want to take information away from this chart, but the information that I want to read is only about lemons. So this becomes useful because I don't have to go and as I would in an essay, start in the beginning and read until I get to the one section that pertains to me. If I want to learn about lemons in a chart, I can go in there as the viewer and disseminate the information that I need to learn. And that's all I'm going to focus on. And then another viewer who wanted to learn more about cantaloupes will do the same and ignore the rest. So you're really able to empower your audience to pinpoint the information that they need. Timelines, very simple in concept. You have a timeline and you chart your information chronologically. I like this example because we use both graphics and pictures in the same medium. And that's something that I don't see too often, but I do like to see that. Process or flow charts. If you get into IT, if you get into project management, these become very important. 
and is essentially, it looks like a hot mess, but once you start to learn what the different colors, different shapes, whether the lines are dotted or solid, all that can relay information to people that need to know. And then I guess my favorite is the article. And it's an article because it kind of has a structure to it. You do, if this becomes valuable if you want to present information in almost like a narrative or structured format, meaning I want my audience to read this first. And after they've read that, they're going to move to point one. And after they finish point one, they'll move to point two, point three. So knowing that, knowing that I can put my information anywhere on this page, where do you think I would put the first point that I want my audience to read? Down here in the bottom right corner? Probably not, right? Because if most people, when they read, they gravitate A to the top of the page, and although it's a little culturally biased, to the left side of the page. And then you start reading. It might not always be the case, but if you have your information structured like that, you kind of know that the eye gravitates towards there. Actually, before we go into creating your infographic, um, so I mentioned that we have studios and in our, in our department and we support a lot of students. What we do also is hire students. And when 